I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. Appreciate you spending some time with us. Tonight we are going to hear from Crystal Long. We appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Thank you. Pretty young lady and so it's nice to have her here and hear your story. I guess you were born and raised in the church, is that right? Yep. Um, Parents was, active and stuff? Yeah, I, um, my dad baptized me and um, my parents were sealed in the temple and um, <laughs> so you have probably had the goal of being married in the temple yourself at some yes, point. Yes, that was my goal, to be sealed yeah. in the temple to my family. So were you active then as a young lady? You went to primary and young women's and all that stuff? Very active. Um, we, I attended young women's. Uh, I was a young women's leader. Oh, yeah. And um, The beehive president or there something. There you go, the beehive yeah, president. And and stuff. Yeah, I went to girls camp. And yeah. all that fun How stuff. How was a girls camp? I, I know that we always had, uh, or they always had fires, you know, and then a, mm. a, 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 not a fast meeting, but a testimony meeting around the campfire. Did you ever share your sh testimony there? And, oh, yes. Yeah? Yes. Did, um, you, did you know the church was true? I believed 100% that it was true. Um, I believe that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God and without even 100% knowing it, I just believed it. Yeah, there was just never really any question, was there? I mean, we just yeah. knew that that was true. And was that because we'd heard it from other people that we loved and trusted, I guess, our moms yes. and dads? And yeah. Yeah, had you done, now you took seminary. Mm -hmm. and yes, in yeah. high school. Yeah, and yeah. did you learn much there? <sighs> there was one thing that just can, still sticks out to me to this day. Um, I remember the uh, seminary teacher saying they were talking about God and how God had gods before him. And a kid asked a question and he's like, I don't like to go there. It just boggles my mind. And I was like, that's the word, boggle. My <laughs> mind is boggled. So I just remember that from seminary. Was the teacher the one that said that? Yeah. You're saying? Because uh -huh. he, he didn't want to think about the... Who's where it started, where, yeah. Who, who was the first God. And yeah. It is kind of incomprehensible, isn't it? it is. And did you understand at that point that Mormonism taught that we could become God? Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, but um, it's weird. I really never wanted to be a God because I'm exhausted here. I'm <laughs> tired. I don't want, I didn't want to be a God. I didn't care to be a God, but I want to be sealed to my family. That's an interesting notion. I hadn't thought about being busy as God. I guess he is kind of tied up, <laughs> isn't he? I mean, who, who wants that responsibility? When, when he, yeah, I guess he rests, he rests on the seventh day or something. I don't know. But So life goes on in high school, and, uh, mm -hmm. and you're just active, and church is true, and yep. families. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have a sister and two brothers. Okay. Yeah. And they felt the same way about the church, very yeah. active. And yeah, my sister is very active still, yeah. and my brother is semi, and I have a younger brother who's just 
<laughs> yeah. Trying to find his way in life. Finding his way, yeah. <laughs> I know of those people myself. Uh, so, so then what happens in life? So I got married when I was 17, and um, I had my daughter at 18. Yeah. Um, my husband, uh, he went to jail for seven months after my daughter was born, and I just threw myself into the church. Um, I became the homemaking Oh, the homemaking leader. leader? Yeah. The Relief Society? Relief Society, and um, I just, it was I threw myself into it, and I loved the church. Um, at that time, I got my patriarchal blessing, yeah. and um, I remember something sticking out, like me and Jesus were really good friends in heaven, and my dad keeps throwing that at me, like, well, Jesus knows you personally. And that was in your patriarchal blessing? Yes. Yeah, so that, that you were good friends with Jesus? Yeah. Ooh, well, you in Mormonism, he's your older brother, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Can, so I'm like, Dad, he knows you too. We're all good, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So, and then, but you're trying to be active in the church, and mm -hmm. are you feeling uh, like you're up to snuff? I mean, do you feel like you're uh, one of the chosen mm -hmm. ones? I mean, you're proud of, of being yes. a Mormon, I guess. I was very proud and very self-righteous. Um, I I fell away from the church a few times, and um, I'd always it was always there. So I would go back to get to go get my God to go get God. I feel like seek that's him where out. you had to come back. Yeah, to and um, when I went back, I was like, I'm good now. I Cause I never. It's like I never did anything wrong, so I'm good. <laughs> and um, yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> So you're just uh, feeling like uh, kind of have, having some ups and downs, it sounds like, in and mm -hmm. out of the church, but activity-wise, yeah. your parents are loving you still and supportive, are they? Yeah, um, my dad has a hard time with me. Um, now? Now, okay. yeah. But before, yeah, they're like, she's going to learn her way and, you yeah. know, we'll probably end up in the same place. Yeah. It will yeah. eventually work out, and you're sealed to them, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they look, they, they have the hope that you're not lost, and that you'll eventually, or you know, that you'll eventually come around and all. Mm -hmm. But um, so, what happens next in life? Um. So I'm just gonna bring it to this point. Um. So, uh, a year and a half ago, um. My mom came and she's like, let's go get our cards read, our tarot cards. So I was like, okay, let's go. And um, Now she's a good member of the church, right? Yeah. Okay. She okay. is, <laughs> but not, she doesn't go very often, but oh, okay. she still goes. And um, we got our cards read and this lady, what she set out, set out um, was, it was real to me. Like, oh my gosh, how'd she know that? And anyways, um, we, I let her take a egg and water around my body and my husband's body because she said she could cure, cure us. And um, of, I of sin or illness. Yeah, of or illness. Something. Yeah, and um, also I burnt down these candles in my house. And after I did that, like my house felt really different. And I remember just doing my dishes and like something black just like flew past me, and I was like, whoa. But it didn't. I didn't want to acknowledge it, and I, I didn't really acknowledge it. But we had missionaries coming over to my house because um, I wanted to be sealed in the temple, and um, they were coming for my husband. Teaching him. Was yeah. he a member? No, but oh, he would okay. go with me. Okay, but yeah. he, they wanted to convert him to the yes. church. Okay. Uh huh. So um, I remember sitting there telling them, "Hey, you guys, I, uh, we did this. What do you think of it?" And they're like, "I don't think." anything of it if you don't believe or whatever um, then it's not real so I was like okay and um, I remember one specific time uh, a neighbor of mine Kevin <laughs> uh, he came over with some missionaries and um, we were just sitting there and we were smiling and joking around and um, all of a sudden my husband just turned over and looked me in my eyes and 
it was just really dark and he's like crystal i'm just gonna say it and i was like what and he was like you say all this stuff about me and i know you what you're thinking is this and that and he really hurt me and i'm i've never experienced such hurt like that and in front of these men and they just sat there and, and they didn't know what to say yeah either, I'm sure so I just got up and I threw my book down and I ran to my room and um, I was sitting on my bed crying and uh, while I was crying I could just feel something in I was in the dark and by the corner of my room just like I felt like it was laughing and I was like I'm crazy I'm this isn't real and then all of a sudden I felt like I could go into a deep sleep and I was like, oh my gosh, I could sleep right now. And then a second later, I was good. I was like, oh, that was weird. And then I saw what was going on. Like this thing came back around and I was trying to fight it. I was like, what's going on? And it released. And I was just like, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. And it flew out my window. Wow. And um, we just had a lot of dark things going on at my house. Wow. So you really felt an evil presence there. Yeah. And when and it left when you invoked the name of, oh, of yes. Jesus. That mm -hmm. must have been a good feeling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Did you experience more of that? Is, is that what um, you were? Yeah. So um, every time the missionaries would come over, um, we would have them bless our home because there's crazy things going on in our house at this time, and they would bless it. And right when they'd leave, me and my husband would fight like we've never fought before and I remember one time just going and grabbing my kids and running for the door and right when I got to the door that sleepy feeling I had like I could just go into a deep sleep right now so tired like I sent my kids down and I had to go lay down and I was like I'm, I give up you know and wow. it's just crazy what do you think God was trying to teach you God was <laughs> coming for me yeah <laughs> yeah you feel like he was trying to talk to you or at least show that you you needed him or yes, something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. So, did he? Uh, did your husband ever commit to the missionaries? Or yes, he got baptized um, a few months later. Did he? Yeah. And, and, and did you end up going to the temple? No, oh, we, we didn't. didn't. Okay. We had to wait a year after he was baptized, and we didn't make it to that okay. year. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so. What else happens in life? I mean, you, 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 you feel still, are you feeling okay about the church? How do you feel about yes. Mormonism? I mean, you still believe it's true. Yes, I had with all a, these experiences, but. Yeah, I had a Christian friend come into my life and she asked me a question about the church yeah. and I didn't even know what to say. I can't remember the question, but she said, Crystal, if there was only one truth, would you want to know it? And I had to sit there for a second, and I was like, yeah, I would. And she left, and right after that moment in time, my life started changing. What happened? Um, so, um, just, it was really heavy. She came around the time that all this was going on, yeah. and um, so, I don't know, this, my husband was an ex-drug addict, okay. and he uh, started to use again and he went and uh, got some drugs with a friend and that night um, his friend overdosed and he yeah. ended up dying two days later and after that like word on the street was my husband was the one who was oh. it was his fault and so my husband couldn't take that it hurt him he he felt the weight and uh, just life got really hard after that. And I'd call my friend and I'd be like, um, this and this. And she'd like, this she'd is your pray Christian for friend. me. Yeah. And I remember like praying myself, getting down on my knees by my bed. And my prayers were different. They weren't the same as like, it was usually like a repetitive thing. I would say like, thank you, bless this, yeah. amen. And now it was like something from you were really praying. deep in my heart was yeah. crying out. It was different. Wow. Yeah. So did she keep talking to you about differences? Did she talk to you about the differences between Mormonism and Christianity or just talk to you about Jesus or what? She, so she had the same experiences that I was going through, the dark, the dark stuff. She was Indian, so they practiced a lot of 
I don't know, that kind of different stuff. Yeah. And so she, she went she through a lot of... She understood what yeah, you were going through, maybe. Yeah, but her and her husband would come over once a week and read the Bible with me. And I remember her husband specifically telling me, is John chapter 1, verse 1, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <laughs> he was in the beginning with God. And he's like, he put his hand up like this. He's like, Jesus is God's words. So I was trying to picture Jesus from these paintings coming out of a God in these paintings mouth. Yeah. I was like, how does that work? So for a long time, I, I thought about that. Like it was on my mind, like how is Jesus God's word? Yeah. How does that work? And how different that is when, when we learn that God's a spirit and, and then to know that Joseph Smith said he saw God in mm -hmm. Jesus. No one el else has ever said they saw God, yeah. the Father. So, uh, and Jesus said he was a spirit. That was kind of different for me, anyway. Mm -hmm. Did you other learn anything else doctrinally that, yeah. that bothered you? Um, I went to the book of Galatians and um, read about, okay, if anyone brings another gospel <laughs> contrary to the one that Paul brought, um, do not listen, or he will be accursed. So, wasn't that I read that one too. That was really surprising to that me. That hit me hard. Yeah. And I was like, Joseph, because I remember when I was starting all this, like, I was like, okay, so I had my Book of Mormon and the Bible, and I was like, okay, because the missionaries told us to just open it up and it'll bring you right where you need to go. So I did that, and I was like, wait. I'm starting from the beginning, and I opened it up, and I started reading Joseph Smith's first vision, first vision or yeah. in his testimony yeah. and <coughs> about him seeing this angel that came to him three times in one night, saying the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay. And then I remember finding Galatians, and I was like, wait a second, an angel, an angel of light, an angel Gee, of light. No. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and so one thing I did was to go back and read what Paul said, you know, because the letters of Paul, the, in mm -hmm. Romans and Corinthians and all of the letters that he wrote, what did Paul say? Because he said, if anybody preaches anything that I'm not preaching, then let them be accursed. Yeah. So I thought, well, I better find out what Paul taught. And sure enough, it was, it was quite an eye opening. One thing I wanted to get back to is you said your Christian friend prayed for you. Yes. Had you ever had that experience before? No, and um, the time she did it with me right there was amazing because um, it was, so my husband um, ended up passing away um, a little while, a few months later from a drug overdose. I'm sorry. And um, two days later, I was in my room and it was nighttime and I haven't slept in like two days. And she just came walking in my room and. People don't really come in my room, but she came and uh, I, I had like, whenever I came in my room, I would see these little black, I'll call it energy balls, just <laughs> like fl flooding my ceiling. And um, I always wondered what they were and I'd watch them like fly around. I don't know, I sound crazy when I say it, but um, she came in and I just started telling her like, hey, so, um, my mom took me to do tarot cards and this lady, w like whatever happened, I told her that, yeah. the experience, and uh, she screamed out from deep down inside, like I've never heard someone scream like, no! And I, like it like, caught me off guard, I was like, what? And she's like, Crystal, that's witchcraft. And um, mm. she just started in prayer and she called on Jesus in 10 different names, like from the Bible. And it was just so beautiful. And I, I had chills all over. And like when I opened my eyes, the room was bright. I didn't see these things anymore. And it yeah. was just beautiful. Now you've started going to a Christian church. Yeah. How was that the first time you went? Was that a little different? It was. Standing up and singing was weird. Um, I couldn't really hear the words really at that moment, but uh, I just remember the first time going, the pastor putting his ar hand on me and he prayed over me. And he said, like the only thing I remember from that prayer is like, Lord, um, 
I just ask that you uh, allow her to know, to fear you and nothing else in this world. Oh, wow. And so I went home and I feared God. Whatever was going on in my house, I had no fear. I could go down in my basement and do laundry and I was okay. <laughs> and I had no fear. And that's a good feeling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I felt really close to God yeah. at that moment. Well, so uh, had you... I don't know how much studying you've done before, but now in the Bible, have you been reading more in the Bible now than you did as a Latter-day Saint? Oh, yes. Before, I couldn't open up my scriptures. I felt overwhelmed. Um, there's these conference talks. There's yeah. the Book of Mormon. There's the Pearl of Great Price. There's all this stuff. I'm, I felt so behind everyone. And overwhelmed like okay I just give up Sat it easier aside. just to put it away than yeah. To, yeah yeah and now now you read the Bible and yes there's only one book I gotta read and <laughs> I don't have to read but I do it because it you feeds me feeds yeah. my soul and and do you notice now the worship at church different than okay yeah um in the Mormon church I couldn't sing because I'd want to cry mm. I I thought I it was the spirit and I'd want to cry so I couldn't sing but I'd just read the words while it was going now at church I'm not a good singer but I just sing as you loud as sing. I can <laughs> want to worship God yeah yeah it's totally different isn't it we we notice that we don't talk much about Jesus in in the Mormon church or he does I shouldn't say we don't talk about him but it, it's just not the focus uh, yeah. The sacrament prayers in Jesus' name, and we close all the talks and prayers in Jesus' name. But really, worshiping Jesus is is just uh, not really done, and it's certainly yeah. not a verse by verse study of the Bible. Have you noticed that too? Oh yeah, I went to church looking for Jesus. I remember I wondered like, why can't I have Jesus and, and God throughout the week? Like I see my neighbors do. I totally in my mind I thought they got him. And I was like, why can't I have him? And so every Sunday I'd go to church to get God, but it, he was never really talked about, you know? So in, I was, in the Mormon church. Yeah, yeah, and I'd come home, okay, I got my God for the week. <laughs> Did you understand grace and, and works no. when you were LDS? It didn't really mean anything to me because I thought I was already good because I got the baptism in and that you're already a member and yes yeah so yeah now it's now was there much guilt in that you had I mean as through your life there uh, different experiences and so on did you feel like you weren't measuring up I yeah. mean you were looking at others as they they were probably perfect and yes yep. you weren't I looked at others I'd watch my neighbors walk up the street so beautifully and uh, with their kids and they all looked so good yeah. and just perfect and I wanted that um, but I could never have it I could never measure up and you and that guilt kind of b puts a burden on you don't you feel like you're always feeling like you're not worthy or you yes. you just have a guilty guilt complex or something but yeah yeah now how do you feel um, now I feel like um, I feel amazing, like, grace is so beautiful to me, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Yeah. It's by grace that and not saved, of works. Not works. So that no man may boast. Um, Had you understood that as a no, Mormon? I no, didn't either. No, I didn't. I didn't that completely, yeah, saved by grace and not by works. Yes. So. So does that kind of ease your burdens? You feel you don't feel as guilty and I don't feel burdens anymore. I God took it. He said, "Come to me all ye who are heavy laden, and uh -huh. I will give you rest." Yeah. So I find myself resting in God a lot. Um losing my husband and having to raise my kids on my own. Yeah, that must be hard. It's hard. So I turn to God and he set me free. Well, praise God. I, I just, it's such a joyful message. And, you know, we have such hope in Christ and mm -hmm. we, and, and His Word to, to, 
to be able to trust the Bible. Yes. As a Mormon growing up, I didn't trust the Bible. It was, you know, it was translated incorrectly. So how can you really trust it? And mm -hmm. I didn't know what I could trust. Yeah. I didn't know, okay, what I didn't. And yeah. to read it in context and to read the verses and. Yeah. You know, so you're on a better journey now and you feel good about life and yes. oh that's awesome um i wanted to ask you though about prayer you've you, you mentioned prayer a little bit did you feel like it was pretty repetitious as a always as yeah. a young person and yeah and it was always like i added these words the thy no. Yeah, that. that's not how I speak. I now when I talk, it's kind of King James English, yes, right? Yes, it is King yeah, James. Yeah, out of the King James Bible. Yes. Now when I pray, it's deep inside, and it's the spirit that just comes uh, out. It's beautiful. Well, my, my daughter, I interviewed her a couple of weeks ago, and she was. It was so interesting when she explained it to me that she felt like the church was this huge obstacle or mountain between her and God mm. and <coughs> excuse me and she just felt like that was completely removed when she was born again did you feel that oh yes I feel every day I find <coughs> God like every day God is here I think about him every day I wondered how I could have him every day and he's here every day and I just praise him for that it's not a burden to go to church right now, is it? <laughs> oh my goodness, no. I go to church now because I want to. I yeah. get my soul gets fed digging into these scriptures and pulling, you know, them apart little by little. Yeah. My soul is like, Oh, connections, connections, over here, here. It's so beautiful and I just can't get enough. I'm like, I, I need this every day. And yeah. I praise God that we have <laughs> such pastors in the church, yeah. uh, in, the, in Christianity, who've devoted their lives to studying the Word and being able to share it with us. And, and then as we rest in God, that we have such freedom. And, and the guilt's off. You're not judgmental now, right? And, oh, yes. You know, I was so judgmental. I was well, you said self-righteous and all that. Oh, yes. And we know now that we just glorify God, right? Yes. Yeah. I I go to the streets. I, I look for these people on the streets, the homeless, the addicts, and I just want to yeah. give them the joy I have. Jesus and, is real. And we don't judge them. They probably it's have gone. better hearts yes. than the rest of us. Well, mm -hmm. Crystal, our time's gone. But you're <laughs> such so sweet and, and an interesting story, and I'm sure others relate to what you've been through. And I hope that they'll pay attention and listen and study and trust in Christ. Yes. Okay. Good night.